But the young man joining us now uh, is developing, uh, like the rest of this team, what they hope is going to be their own Thanksgiving tradition. Clay Hendricks said on Sunday, if you're practicing on Thanksgiving morning, that is a good thing because that means that you've made the postseason. Ken Lamondola, the linebackers coach, along with uh, the rest of the staff, will be doing just that tomorrow. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Thanks pull for pull that me. microphone. Pull it. Pull it up. There we go. But much better. There we go. Doing well. I appreciate you having me on. Well, thank you for uh, spending some time with us. It's been a a um, interesting year, hasn't it? No question. Uh, the rough start where I think the first two games could have went either way. Um, NC State played them tight in the first half, and then to respond how we did is credit to the guys buying into what we're preaching. It's been fun. No question about it. When 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 Clay Hendricks approached you about coming here and, and joining his staff, coaching the linebackers. What was it about him? What was it about Furman that you said, yeah, I want to be a part of that? Well, first and foremost, um, I never played for Clay because I played linebacker in college, but um, I was at the Air Force Academy when he was, obviously, when I played and coached. Um, and just being around him, I know two things, that he was a great man. And he was a heck of a coach, and mm -hmm. every uh, one of my friends and teammates who played for him, they loved him. And he got the most out of their guys. So that was probably the biggest thing because I trusted him. Um, and then top it off a place like this where that, the resources you have with the location, academics, uh, the, and obviously the winning tradition, um, it was an easy decision. And I'm fortunate for the opportunity. Weather's a little better too, isn't it? No question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting used to the sunshine. <laughs> um. Uh, let, let's let's talk about this uh, this linebacker core. Uh, that that's your point of emphasis. And the season started off. You you had um, you had some experience. Uh, Dylan Woodruff was a senior, and he was going to kind of anchor the the inside linebacker spot for you. You you had some talent, maybe a little unproven, especially with Chris Washington on the outside, who did not have a single tackle a year ago. But you have Joe Farrar coming back. You got A.K. Olasanya. So. All right, we got some pieces to work with here. And, and then things begin to happen and, and happen kind of rapidly, didn't they? <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, all, all those plans. <laughs> like you said, um, Dylan, this fifth year senior, he, uh, he was on that championship team uh, in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, he played actually and was recruited as a quarterback, then played a little safety and then made his way down the linebacker. His story is pretty cool and unique in itself. Um, but he is a great young man. I was fortunate enough. Um, he bought into everything I had to say. He was a leader in my room, a uh, leader of our defense, uh, and he still is, even with his unfortunate injury that he has suffered against Wofford. Uh, he's, he's a second linebacker coach. Um, he takes the guys, uh, and uh, he's a, he, uh, he relates to them well, and I'm, I'm fortunate to have him. Did I think he's going to go down uh, that second quarter in Wofford? No, sir. Um, it's a frustrating ending for his career, but um, – we're still playing football, and he's still leading. So, by, by the way, I have to take one little interruption here. Uh, I have to say hello to my granddaughter Annie, who, who for some somehow my wife Angela has gotten her to sit still long enough. She'll be three in a, in uh, just a few weeks. That's awesome. Sit still long enough to to see Grandpa, or she calls me Buddha. That's another story <laughs> uh, for another time. But on 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 the uh, computer screen here. So hello, Annie. Uh, <laughs> now go play with Mimi. Um, the uh, yeah, so so you have all these plans, and as we as we said, yeah, Dylan goes down. Um, AK ended up uh, separating the the was it the, the elbow. elbow? Yeah. So so he goes down. And so we we go into the Colgate game, and we're going to start two kids at the inside linebacker spots named Raynard Ellis and Elijah McCoy, neither of whom were recruited here originally as linebackers, right? Renard was. Okay, uh, he was. Correct. And even before that, Alex Birch. Um, yeah. He's a sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee. He, uh, he had an issue with his neck and shoulder that was been nagging him for quite some time. And they did some more digging and it didn't get worse. And um, he is unfortunately not able to play um, again. So there's three guys uh, that all went down for this madness to happen. Um, and as you said, uh, Elijah was actually recruited as a safety right. in Renard, a linebacker. And, and here they are starting at, uh, at Colgate, and, and they've been starting ever since. Yes, sir. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to have two kids that love the game, take coaching, um, 
do everything they're asked for. It, mm-hmm. Obviously, it's frustrating because one played a cornerback mostly in Elijah in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Renard, um, it's just college ball. It's a new system. Uh, and embracing what we're trying to accomplish on a defense. Uh, it's a big learning curve, especially at this position when you're expected to know everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, run fits, uh, coverage-wise, and how that affects you with the adjustments we have. So there's a lot to learn as a freshman. Yeah, and we'll talk about that learning process in a minute. But I know early on, as we got a, a sense of the athleticism and, and, and the, the talent and the ability of these kids, uh, talking with Chad Staggs, defensive coordinator, and, and even with Clay, they both kind of said the same thing. So they got a lot to learn, but there's something to be said for the ability to see the ball and go tackle the ball. Absolutely, especially the mindset as a freshman where this is big boy football. You're mm-hmm. not playing against um, so-so competition uh, in high, as you were in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the biggest thing as far as a mindset. Um, with Elijah, too, he's the first time he's played in the box in his whole life. And it's a different story coming downhill from maybe 12 yards. Uh, when you're in the secondary, then you're four or five yards away in the box, and you got to go stick a fullback. Uh, it's a different mindset. Mm-hmm. So um, as far as just knowing what to do is one thing, but in actually having to do it and embrace the physicality of this game, uh, it's a different story. So take us back to that first week of practice when you knew that was going to be the case leading in, in, into Colgate. Um, what was the – approach what was the game plan with these two kids we wanted uh them to play fast so coach Staggs did a great job uh, the the rest of our coaching staff as well um of trying to make it simple and putting them in positions to be successful um, where they didn't have to think per se um they could just go and play Mm -hmm. um and sure enough Renard was player of the week and had 16 tackles it was pretty special to see How, how far as far as being able to get them up to speed on the, everything from the nuances of linebacker to what Chad expects from that position. How far have they come from Colgate to where we sit right now? Night and day. And that's a credit to them and the effort they've put in. Um, as I said, they're, they're bought in, uh, as well as everyone else in that room. We moved another um, s- recruited safety, Jack Owen, to linebacker as well. And he's our second will, and he's picked it up. He's never played it um, in these kids, I, I'm again, I'm very fortunate to be around them. Good kids on and off the field. Love the game of football. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, it's evident with, with what we were able to do in defense. Yeah, I think Clay said that uh, in, in the win over the Citadel that Jack Owen probably played about 30 plays yes, sir. Uh, against, against that option-oriented uh, offense. Yes, sir. He went to a high school in Georgia, Marist, I guess, um, where they ran that. So he's got some experience, but um, not at that position per se. <laughs> yeah as we discussed, but it's been fun. Um, still have ways to go, but uh, the, the potential is definitely high. Well, what, what's, what was the challenge like for you? Uh, how many headaches did you walk away with? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I think that probably answers the question right there. <laughs> no, it was tough, especially um, what, I, what I tried to um, relate to the secondary guys was – of how it makes sense from what they knew from the back end of things. Mm -hmm. You're fitting this way because when you're at safety, X, Y, Z. So that's how I try to approach it with them. Uh, And Renard, uh, he has always been a linebacker, played some pullback and running back as well Mm on offense. Um, But he has just some natural instincts that you can't teach. He's a tough kid, will come downhill, and he'll hit you. Um, It's just more him. It was just playing within a scheme. It's just been so fascinating to watch, and and I – I know that you had to be extremely happy when you saw both those young men named the all freshman team. Yeah, absolutely. And they, they deserve all that. Um, um, future is bright. They have ways to go, but um, they deserved it. Um, it's been fun coaching them. It's made me a better coach. Um, I definitely how to approach. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'll ever be in the situation again where I have two true freshmen starting uh, at whatever position I'm coaching. But now you won't get called off guard if you do, right? <laughs> there you go. Been there, done that. <laughs> but it's a credit to the kids. They, they deserve it all. Mm-hmm. You know, as, and, and you have to, to – we, we get so caught up in the moment, and Clay and I have had the conversation mm-hmm. a couple of times of how quickly expectations changed for this team among the fan base and I, I guess even inside that locker room from the 0-3 start to people would have been disappointed if we didn't make the playoffs. And this is coming off of a 3-8 and eight year and a coaching mm-hmm. change and, and everything else. And all this happened, you, you know, almost almost immediately 
starting with the Colgate game. Um, but bigger picture, which I know that you, you have to be able to think that way as well, as as well as they've played as quickly as they've come along, you got to be excited about an off season coming up where you're going to be able to get them bigger, faster, and stronger, and you're going to be able to do more of the quote unquote linebacker book work, and then see what kind of players they come back next year when they can go through a spring practice and, and go through a full fall camp at that position. You hit the nail on the head, and it's not just that linebacker, too. Coach Miller's done a fantastic job with a very, very young defensive line as well. Mm -hmm. And that this offseason will be huge for those guys, especially the weight they need to get um, as far as now they know the scheme. It's just doing it bigger, stronger, faster. Same thing with Coach Williams and Coach Vaughn uh, at their respective positions. Um, it's, it's huge for us because we are a very young defense. We're losing three seniors. Um, and two of them were inside linebackers. So it's been a it's been a work in progress, and we expect to get a lot better in the offseason, as you mentioned. One of the things that, that Clay mentioned after the Sanford loss when we did his show on Sunday was that, and, and the word he used was exposed. He thought that maybe we got exposed a little bit. And by that, he meant that as great as this run has been, and, and we hope that it's going to continue, we still are a football team that, needs to get bigger, needs to get stronger, needs to get more experienced. And, and because of those factors against a team like Sanford, which has all of those things, if you don't execute, you're just not good enough talent-wise and strength-wise to go out there and still overcome that many mistakes and beat somebody. I think Coach had um, spot on, especially on defense I could speak to. Um, we just missed opportunities. We didn't fit uh, the run game well. Um, mistakes that cost us big plays. And the biggest thing for us was fourth down. I think Sanford was four for four on fourth down. Yeah. Um, and it was third and nine in addition on the one-yard line and or two-yard line, I believe. And we couldn't get off the field. And that they went down and scored uh, six after that. All things being equal, uh, it, it's just been a phenomenal year. The, the turnaround for this, mm -hmm. for this program has been, uh, I think, beyond anything what anybody could have expected. You know, a new coach comes in, there's always a certain level of excitement. Uh, and, and I said this from from the day that, that he walked onto campus here, and part of it, I guess, has to do with me being in this building on a daily basis. But Clay, this was he's the coach that this fan base wanted, so the excitement seemed to be ratcheted up three or four notches. Uh, and, and then to have this happen in year one, uh, so many good things are happening with this program off the field. So many good things are happening in recruiting. And I know it's a momentum thing that you want to carry over. Absolutely. And uh, when Coach Hendricks first got here, his message to the guys was, we expect to win now. Um, obviously, the past couple years, um, they struggled a little bit. Uh, but we didn't want to use that as a crutch or an mm -hmm. excuse by any means. Um, our expectations, um, starting with Coach Hendricks on down, we wanted to win. We wanted to win now. Um, and our guys bought into that. And I think, obviously, the first two games didn't go as planned. But um, I think it, in, in the long run, it, it taught us how to fight. And we appreciate it more um, with starting slow and how the kids were able to fight and respond uh, moving forward. Yeah. Well, one of those two losses, you get a chance for redemption. Mike Buddy dubbed, uh, dubbed it Redemption Tour. <laughs> hashtag Redemption Tour on Twitter. Um, the 34-31 loss to Elon in week two in the final play of the game. So you, you've... You've got that knowledge of them just like they have it of you. What's the key from a defensive standpoint? And uh, I'll ask you the, at least that part of it. What's the key to slowing an offense that, that had some success against us in week two? We have to stop the run. Stop the run, uh, we'll have a chance um, to be successful. Um, in addition to that, eliminate big plays because they had a few um, with mistakes in our coverage-wise um, and third downs. And we need to generate turnovers when we can, too. Obviously, that's for every game. But mm -hmm. the biggest thing for this game is stop the run, play assignment sound football, and just play with passion and a swag that um, we developed later on in the season that I don't think we had at that time. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was the case. Yeah, well, you know, easy on paper, easy to say. Yes, sir. My former pastor of mine, would, you know, he would be preaching and teaching a, a – a, 
particularly uh, difficult uh, a difficult subject or something, and he would say, "Easy preaching, hard living." So <laughs> yes, sometimes I think it it, uh, it follows through in other areas of life as well. Yes, sir. Well, listen, congratulations on the uh, team success. Congratulations on the success of of the linebacker core, uh, and especially the honors that uh, Elijah and Reynard got. It, it's been uh, fantastic to watch, and hopefully, hopefully, we're not done for a while. Yes, sir. Uh, it's it's an honor to be here, but that's not the end goal. We want to keep playing. I got you. Ken, thank you. I appreciate it. That is linebackers coach Ken Lamondola joining us here on the program this morning.